Okay, so this is a view of the metaverse I'm in right now. So you can't see it, but there's a whole range of controls and we've actually built this up. This is what the OEA interface looks like. And about eight weeks ago, there was nothing in here. Our team of maybe three or four people, we'd never used this platform before. And we've kind of figured out how to use it. It's basically, I think I said yesterday, it's like PowerPoint meets Zoom, but that's not even entirely accurate. That's just the best kind of reference that I can give you. So the meta meta metaverse, it starts to get really complicated. We just saw a nested VR world inside of OEA, inside of a web browser on top of your computer, right? This starts to get very, very nested. And this is gonna be part of this, you know, part of this forecast is that we're going to be in these nested realities. And that concept of nested realities isn't new. We've been thinking about that for quite a while. Um, there's lots of different maps and different kind of philosophies that look at nested systems and concepts of that. Um, one of the nested systems that we're most familiar with and we're using right now is the internet. And you can see here, this is the ARPANET very early on. And actually some of the original founders of IFTF were folks working on the ARP in ARPANET. And they said, hmm, maybe this distributed communication network might actually have implications beyond military and, ap uh, and academic applications. Uh, and of course, today we have this incredibly nested system that we're actually all in together right now. Uh, and what's so, one of the things I like to point out about the internet is that it's not the most powerful and amazing thing, uh, it, it, one of the most powerful, amazing things that humans have created because it's a collection, the most incredible collection of information, but it's the most incredible connections of information. These are nested systems. These are connected worlds. It's, when we say worlds, it's not just a 3D world. These are worlds of data and information and knowledge and community. And you know, it's interesting that you know, that's also how our brains work, right? It's not just that we have a lot of cells, it's how they're connected. So the Emerging Media Lab has been very interested in this idea of emergence, right? It's not just, okay, what, what, what might happen, but what is emerging now? This is the practice at IFTF of looking at signals. And emergence, I really like this idea of you know, the rising of novel and coherent structures, patterns, and properties during the process of self-organization in complex systems. So that's what we're in right now. This, when we say metaverse, that's in many ways this complex layered of systems that are nested, nested, nested again. And as we've built this system, you know, uh, what we realized is that this OEA experience that we've created with you all and for you all, this is not just PowerPoint meets Zoom. Um, it's really a whole new paradigm. And what Dylan and myself and a bunch of our other collaborators have been creating, I really realized what we're building is this is a social computer. We're doing social computing with you. Um, and we're building systems to connect each, each other, to share information. It's a whole new paradigm of not just sharing knowledge, but when you add the presence element, then suddenly you add the social element. And now you add whole new layers of communication and collaboration and meaning. One of our favorite signals and organizations is a research lab here in Oakland called Dynamic Land. It's an ambient computing space in which every space becomes a projection surface and they have computer vision and the building itself is a computing interface. And they have this concept set that they say, the computer of the future is not a product, but a place. And I would argue that we're in a computer right now. I mean, not just in your computer, but we're in a computing system inside of OEA. And so a lot of what we do is that in the EML is we, we study experimental, experiential communication platforms because things like VR are hard to really understand until you've actually gone into them. We really believe in heads in hands on experience. And of course, you all have been in our giant experiment here. You've been fully at least heads in uh, and some hands on with your clapping and things like this. And that's inside of oh yeah. And so that's the platform we're in right now. And I'd like to invite one of the co-founders of OYA, Andrew Lin, to come and talk to us and maybe pull back the curtain a little bit. I showed you some of it, but uh, to what that, so can I have a warm round of applause to bring uh, uh, Andrew Lin up? So Andrew, welcome. So before I say anything, Andrew, can we just, can we get in the share a thought? Because this is one of my favorite features of, what has, what, what has been surprising to the audience or what have you liked about Oh Yeah? Here's your chance to tell the creator what has been interesting to you because you know, we've noticed you know, just the applause and the be able to share reactions. What has been interesting to you, the audience, about Oh Yeah? What has been different? 
it's felt so much more warmer and personal. Less squareness. Yes, we've tried to get out of the box. It works. <laughs> yes, seamless. Well, it hasn't been totally seamless, but that's not their fault. Uh, we broke it many times. Love the lounge room. It's much easier to use than others. Interactive, the clapping, more engaging. Yeah. So, Andrew, tell us about what OEA is to you and why did you create it? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, let's see. So, I, mean, I think one of our one of our customers who actually got married on OEA, they, they threw in this amazing wedding. Um, they said OEA is a feeling. Like it's a, it's like this response, like you enter an OEA space and suddenly you feel something. And it's like very different than being in sort of like the grids of Zoom and Google Meet and Teams. It's like when in OEA you enter a place and then you feel the place and you, you feel the people and, and just the, the ambiance. And I think that's one of the big things that we really discovered is like building that ambiance is, is really important and allowing like the creators of that space to express themselves and, and like create that feeling for, for their attendees and, and their participants. Um, I think that's, that was really really this like interesting thing that we found while building OEA. Um, sort of like the, the origins of OEA are, are pretty interesting. Um, we, we sort of like, you know, um, at the beginning of the pandemic, we were hanging out on, on Google Meet actually, like uh, my, my co-founders and I, and uh, we found that it was, it was sort of draining just to sit there in a grid all day and, and try to collaborate. And like, we, you know, we were trying to incubate a new, a new company. Um, we'd done a couple startups together in the past. And uh, we, we decided to like take a couple of weeks to try to solve our own problem. Um, and we, uh, we started building like, you know, kind of like virtual office collaboration software where like, you know, everybody at a desk and there, there's, you know, you could do like cool, like super powered screen shares and have multiple windows being shared. And, um, and then at some point, um, one, somebody else found out we we're doing this project and they're like, Hey, like we, we want to do like, like a video chat where you sit in a circle and you pass it like a stone around and each person talks in order. And so we spent a weekend just prototyping that for them. And like through the course of like the next week, they kept asking for all these little changes to like, you know, oh, change the background color this, can the stone look like this? And like, we came to this realization that like, um, it's like, why do you need to be like a, a software engineer in order to build these kinds of online real-time interactions? Like, is there some way um, that we can empower everybody to, to construct these experiences and these interactions for, for other people and the people that they, they, they want to hang out with? Um, and so that was sort of the origins of OEA. It's like, is there a way that we can like sort of remove the necessity of being a software engineer? I just want to just show you guys a real quick. This is going to be meta meta. Don't let it break your brain. But this is what, hold on. Let's see. This is what you're in. Right, this is what I'm controlling right now. <laughs> and you can see there's literally, I've got this stage alone has over several hundred layers. And I just want to say, like, yes, I've worked with video software and I was a VJ in many years, but I didn't know anything about OEA eight weeks ago. And we've built a highly complex, like I said, social computer. So it's, I've been blown away with how accessible this has been. And obviously we're doing something that's extremely complicated. But I wonder if you can just give us, I know you have a little quick demo prepared. Oh yeah, totally. Um, so I wonder if you could show us kind of starting something a little bit more basics where people could start with their free account if they want to sign up for it right now. So I'm going to stop uh, sh sharing and I'll let you share. Here we go. Okay. All right. So this is uh, this is going to do a quick run through of how to create a very basic scene. So typically, like with every every uh, every workspace, you want to uh, kind of like make it feel like a place. And so often you just create choose a media image. In this case, I'm going to be creating like a very simple talk show. Um, so this is like a really good talk show setting. This is just a, some stock footage that we have. Um, the interface here is quite simple. It's like a drag and drop. Like what you see is what you get interface. So you can just type, you know, Andrew's talk show. Um, you can drag this around. You can resize it. You can center it. Do whatever you want. Um, since this is a talk show, you know, you might want to add some media. So we, we, we find that mixing and matching media is very important for making things feel good. So you know, just throw like a, a little television screen, some some uh, some ambience on the wall here. And then, yeah, like, good point from Sarah. If you can't, if you want to see more detail, just use pinch to zoom. You can zoom in a little bit more. Yeah. And then uh, let's play this video, and we can make this look a little bit cooler. Um, we have all these like visual things because, like you know, as I said, ambience is really important. So let's make this television glow a little bit. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Oh, looks, look at me. It's a little Bad less glow. lighting. And then the cool part of this is like it's really easy to throw uh, other people into the scene. I have a couple of helpers here with me for my talk show, um, Bell and Raj from Team Oye. Um, I'll put Hi, Bell. Raj in there. Raj is eating a meal right now, looks like. <laughs> and 
I'm not sure he actually knows he's here, but yeah. we'll put him on there anyway. Or maybe I'll just put myself there as the host. And then we can um, stick Raj in the audience because he'll be eating as he watches, I, I guess. Um, and it's, we make it very easy to, to, to kind of immerse people in the scene. We have a very simple way to uh, segment your background. So for example, I can cut out the arm of the chair. I'll do this really quickly, so it won't be the best cut, but you'll see that we found that this kind of stuff really adds the immersion and like the, the feeling of immersion in, in the scene. A sense of integration for sure. Yep. Oh yeah. And, yep. He's in the chair. And we have like a, a thousand ways to sort of make this more interesting. And like um, I've seen, you've seen a lot of these layout changes in uh, that, that uh, IFTF has been doing in this space. Um, we can do that here as well. We have these, we can basically automate anything you can do in the tool um, using these buttons where you can create these actions to, to change the, the layout that we've seen. So in this case, I'm going to make myself full screen. And then I'm going to create another button that I can cut and paste this and then make another button that takes me out of full screen. So if I want to change the way that things look in this scene, when I, I'm like introducing everybody, I can easily automate myself to the front and introduce uh, my guest, Belle, who is uh, one of our awesome, awesome event coordinators and put it away like that. Andrew, unfortunately, we got to wrap, but this has been amazing. And I just want to say thank you not only to you, you and your team from building this, but for working with us these last eight weeks. Literally, you guys, we've been saying, hey, we need this. And literally, you've made that. You're very community oriented, and that shows, and we really appreciate it. We've definitely a lot of love from the audience here. Thank you so much.